So you, so you, you end up leaving um, Blood, Sweat and Tears, which you were obviously instrumental in, in forming over creative differences to take your own path. And then you record Super Session with uh, Mike Bloomfield and Stephen Stills. How did that James session come about? Well, I had, as an artist, I had nothing to do. I had no, I had no plans for a solo album or I hadn't written anything that made me want to do a solo album. So I thought, well, why not do a jam session album with Bloomfield? Because, um, I mean, we stayed friends ever since that uh, session. Although we lived on, uh, you know, opposite coasts. But we'd, we'd see each other. And, uh, and I got to know his family and he got to know my family and it was like that. And his father, you know, <laughs> was a gigantic uh, uh, businessman. And uh, he invented uh, the, the machines that make coffee uh, in the restaurants and coffee, and they're called Bloomfield machines. I, I guarantee you, even today, if you go in, there's a Bloomfield machine in a place where they make coffee. Huh. So, he, he came from a ridiculously wealthy family. And, and he didn't, you know, that wasn't a part of his life. Season of the Witch. Ah, holy crap. Um, I mean, did you know when you laid it down no, that no. it was incredible as it was? I mean, did you feel it being great in real time as you played it or only after it was... Further down well, the road, was, you it said was that. my first experience with Steve Stills, and um, what happened was uh, I had uh, two days booked in the studio. I didn't think it would take longer than two days to, you know, of playing all night to get enough for an album. And the morning of the I, I can't do it. I, I'm not feeling well. And I said, are you serious? I said, I, I have the session booked and everything. He said, I, I can't do it. I said, okay, bye. And I took my address book out and I started calling LA guitar players. And we were in LA. We did the session in LA as a concession to Bloomfield. And uh, uh, and I had Steve Stills' number, and I, I called, I think, two other people first, but they couldn't do it because it was that night. You know, there were, I, I didn't, it wasn't the next day, it was that night. And so uh, a lot of people couldn't do it. And I called him, I hardly knew him but he had given me his phone number. And I told him the story and he said, uh, so we're just gonna jam, right? I said, yeah. He said, yeah, you know, no, no song songs. I said, not really, no. I said, if we do a song song, it'll be one that we all know, where it'll have two chords in it. <laughs> and, uh, he said, yeah, it sounds like fun. So here comes Steve Stills. And like I say, I hardly know him. And, and we had gotten uh, probably a side of the album the night before with Bloomfield. And I knew that. So I knew what I had to get on the Stills side. And uh, we got it. And uh, uh, not only did we get it, but as you say, uh, a Season of the Witch was amazing because of him. I mean, I called the title. I was glad he knew what the song was. 
and uh, uh, so it was Donovan, right? Yeah, Donovan, I think, did it first, yeah. Yeah, it, I mean, it was his song, he wrote it. Yeah. And um, at that time, I don't know how many people, you know, knew Donovan songs, you know, like that. He had like maybe three albums out. And, uh, but it's only three chords. So it's not so hard. That's one of the reasons I thought of it. And, uh, and we did it. And uh, one of the greatest things on it is the last chord, which Steve Stills plays. After I, I turned the organ off and the organ just went, Bleh. And then he hit this chord that was just sensational, like it was programmed, like we knew it was going to happen. And I said, this is great. This is really good. And somehow we got enough for an album in two nights. And I overdubbed horns uh, on certain stuff because I could. And, and, and for the first time in a situation like that, I was the boss, which had never really happened before because there was a producer and he was the boss. And I said, wow, I'm producing this. This is unbelievable. And so like all these other things that happened to me, here we are. And they put it out and the record company didn't particularly know what to think of it. So they just threw it out there. And, uh, uh, and I began a relationship with the art department because I, I love album covers and I'm really into that. And so I, I spent a lot of time on the uh, album cover, and uh, and I had a, I hired a photographer for the sessions, so I had that. Thank God I had, or you know, there wouldn't have been any pictures on it. And so that's the story of Super Session.